This is a HAL Mi 13 that was dropped from the fifth floor and had been repaired. The casing and screen have been replaced. And it could still power on. However, the device had no signal and a malfunctioning compass. Yet the owner continued using it for three months without signal. Even seeking repairs elsewhere. However, other repair shops declined. Stating the broken motherboard traces were irreparable. And replacing the entire motherboard would be too costly. The owner bought a new phone in the end. Until he found our previous video about fixing a How Me 12E's broken traces, he deliver it to us. We can see the motherboard hasn't been repaired before, but the shielding covers show clear dents from the impact, and the PCB layers aren't severely bent. The main issue is a crack along the motherboard's edge, penetrating all layers, right next to the signal filter IC. This is clearly why the signal failed. First, we examine the motherboard schematics to determine how many traces are broken. The fracture is located here on the diagram. The PCB has 10 layers of traces. Clicking through each layer reveals the damage isn't extensive, fewer than 10 traces, including those connected to the filter IC and the compass IC on the back. The backside traces lead to the compass IC, explaining its failure. The signal traces, however, are only partially broken. Even a few disconnected traces can disable an entire function. Though the total broken traces are limited, the fracture spans a large area, making repairs extremely challenging. We'll need to expose all 10 layers, reconnect the traces. We decide to start with the compass IC traces on the back, a tedious process with no guarantee of success. If you're still watching, please hit that like button to support us. We first remove the shielding cover on the back. To access the compass traces, we grind down to the fourth layer. Using a grinding tool, we carefully widen the area around the crack to avoid damaging adjacent traces. Once we reach the fourth layer, we need to use a blade scraping slowly and carefully in case damage the traces on the other side. We can now see the copper traces beneath the protective coating. Only four traces need reconnection. Two for compass control, one for power, and one signal line. After soldering them, we apply adhesive to stabilize this side before tackling the signal traces. Next, we remove the damaged signal filter IC. Its pins are torn off, so we'll replace it later. After securing loose contacts, we test the compass first, but unfortunately the phone won't power on. <laughs> Plugging in a charger does nothing. Connect to power supply, no power leakage. Power on, the pointer just sway gently then return to zero. A short circuit is suspected. We measure the value at the power supply location, we quickly locked onto the short circuit point. There was actually a short circuit in the power supply at both ends of the motherboard. This was really strange because the machine hadn't been repaired yet. We directly flew a wire from the inductor to supply power, and the current display immediately maxed out. Under the thermal imaging, the power IC showed high temperature and heating. Removing the power IC and measuring the two ends, the value recovered to around 200. We replaced it with a good power IC, reinstalled the inductor, and there was no short circuit in the power supply anymore. The phone can turn on now. Finally, the compass works. 
Halfway there. Let's continue. Next, we still need to repair the circuit of signal filter IC. But there is a problem, whether the circuit here is broken at the interface of the board layer. If yes, we only need to repair this internal circuit, and the signal may be repaired, and there is no need to scrape the circuit below the board layer. After checking, we find that the circuit leads to a large number of chips. We fly out the power supply circuit from the power supply on the back. After flying the circuit properly, we also connect the surrounding peeled-off circuits. Then, we check the diagram. There are only two control circuits left. We measure and find no value at the pinpoints, while there is a value at the opposite pinpoints. So, the disconnection just happens to be at the position pinpoints. Then we just need to fly the wire back. We reapply solder balls to the points. Then we replace the signal filter IC with a new good one. But we still don't know whether the internal signal leading to the upper part is disconnected within this board layer. We assemble back and test again. However, the phone still has no signal. We remove the filter IC again and measure the values. No problem here. Then the fault should be the circuit from the cracked board layer. The number of circuits inside here is not very large. And we can only continue to repair it from this side. Same method, use a grinding pen to grind the board. When we grind to the third layer, a power supply circuit appears. We need to break this circuit and keep grinding. The broken circuit is mainly on the fifth layer. When we grind to the fifth layer, we can clearly see the circuit. Let's scrape out the traces. Exposing three critical traces. Two functional, one ground. It not only leads to the filter IC we repaired, but also leads to the upper filter IC. We fly out the leads from the circuit, first connect them to the first IC, then to the second IC. The power supply trace is still disconnected. We disconnect the trace from power amplifier, fly out a wire from the board layer, then connect the two ends. We have fixed three internal signal traces. In the diagram, we can see the routing on back side and this side are very close to each other. Fortunately, there are not too many circuits. Reassemble back and test again. 5 grams signal instantly appears. Android's signal strength impresses even without antennas. Next, use the curing glue to seal the holes we scraped out and reinstall the antenna interface. Fly a wire from the other end to reconnect the abraded signal output circuit to the antenna interface. And apply glue to fix it. Reattach antennas. And test all functions. Calls, data, and compass now work perfectly. The shielding covers are soldered back to avoid heat damage. Though this video is just minutes long, the repair took nearly a day. Tracing and reconnecting layers is exhausting, but we strive to share the experiences. If you enjoy repair content and need to purchase parts and tools, Give TiVo a like and follow for more.